We're going to switch gear now to uh, physiology, and it's given me a pleasure and honor to present uh, my professor who taught me how to do cardiovascular examination, Professor uh, Mustafa Shememri. He's the chairman uh, of cardiac science department at uh, College of Medicine, a very esteemed uh, interventionalist and gives energy to any room that he's entered to. So. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for organizing committee and for the scientific committee who selected very important topic deep in the speciality of the intervention, particularly Dr. Musa Akbar, who is the le leading this uh, group. And um, uh, from now, ch chairman, co-chairman, panelist, give me an extra minutes from now. <laughs> Thank you. So my task, I will, uh, uh, it's not moving. Okay. My task is to uh, talk about um, the uh, FFR in the setting of acute uh, coronary syndrome. I have nothing to disclose about this talk. First of all, the agenda will talk about the prognosis of STEMI with multifacial disease, how they behave. Secondly, what is the outcome of revascularization of non culbret vessels? And then when to re revascularize the non culbret and the role of FFR in this situation. So, this is a 58 years old came with STEMI, inferior STEMI with the chest pain. And then the angiogram showed that he has CTO, totally occluded RCA. The RCA fixed and distended, and then there was another lesion in the LAD proximal. And the question is now, who will fix the LAD now? Raise your hand quickly, because I have an extra minute to talk to you. Someone who will fix it now? Okay, our chairman and Dr. Fawaz al -Mutairiz. Who will uh, uh, do an FFR now? And I know late. Okay, few people said now they will do. Okay, we will see. Uh, through the talk, what we can have. Okay, so multifacial disease, any fissiles extra to the culprit with the stenosis of 70% if it is an epicardial fissile or 50% or more for the left main, we consider it multifacial disease. So two fissiles, one culprit and the other non culprit significantly stenosis, then we call it multifacial disease. 50% of patients with STEMI, they are presenting with multifacial disease. And 15% of the STEMI, they have CTO. 70 to 80% of uh, non-STEMI, they have uh, a multifacial disease. So it is an important to recognize how to deal with this multifacial disease. You can see the gradient here that the prognosis in terms of mortality, it is very high with triple facial disease in the setting of acute STEMI, and it is less in the double facial disease, and it is far less in the single facial disease. So the gradient between each facial is increased from one to two, there is a significant mortality increase, and from two to three, there is a significant mortality increase. So the triple facial disease predict mortality, and then uh, the three fissile disease predict mortality and acute myocardial infar infarction. Double fissile disease and triple fissile disease can predict MACE in patient with STEMI. And this is a meta-analysis clearly showed in the, fir the upper part that if the patient with non-infarct-related artery, it means with only one single vessel, they do where the mortality at the less in the lower part. But if they have more than one vessel involved as a multi vessel then they consider it a very high risk of mortality. This is a meta-analysis of 28,000, almost 30,000. Then the Angiograms is not doing a good job in the acute setting of acute MI, except for the acute myocardial infarction, because the functional status is different. This is what we should do whenever we have a problem with the second vessel, the FFR is important. Now you can appreciate that we do the proximal pressure and the distal pressure after the stenosis, then we divide the distal pressure to the proximal pressure to bring the FFR. It has been well established in the literatures as well as in the guideline. It is class 1A indicated to do an FFR for intermediate uh, lesions in both the American College of Cardiology as well as European Society of Cardiology. So by now, we have no doubt that intermediate fissiles has to enter for stable angina has to go for FFR. 
Now, for the non-STEMI or you know, an unstable angina, still the FFR doing a good job. And you can see that the, the, the rule of FFR here in the blue, where I am pointing, and the angio unstable non-STEMI is here. So there is a significant difference of survival for, and mace for the patient whom you did uh, uh, FFR. So FFR has a rule in unstable angina and non-STEMI. So how? That's very clear, but in general, that the patient whom you interfere based on angiography, they have more mace compared to the angiography plus FFR, and the difference is significant, 26 to different from 21%. Now, the FFR by expert has no role in acute setting of mastemy, but or non STEMI even in the acute culprit fissiles because there is a problem here that you have a microvascular dysfunction, you have microspasm, you have distal embolization, so you have the milieu of the artery is really different and is difficult to deal with. So what we have here, you can appreciate the stenosis is the same, but the one with the stable in the upper part, the one with the stable in the upper part, that the distal to the stenosis, that the pressure was 70. Meanwhile, the, in that case, the FFR will be 0.7 because you will divide 70 over 100, it will be 0.7. Meanwhile, if there is microvascular dysfunction, as in this situation, the pressure will be elevated post the stenosis. Uh, you know, after the stenosis, the pressure will be elevated. Then the elevation of the pressure because of the increased resistance from the microvascular, and that will lick the FFR 0.9. So most of the time in the acute setting, this is the picture. You have microvascular dysfunction, which will raise for you the FFR, and you will think that the FFR is really normal. Meanwhile, if you wait for some time, and then it might tend to be significant as if you have seen in this situation. And there is a clear gradient that in the acute setting, the FFR may be overestimation or underestimated, but with time, the stable setting, you will see that the FFR going down and the IFR going up. So in general, FFR slightly underestimate non culprit lesion, while IFR slightly overestimate the non culprit lesion. So what is the solution? The solution is to wait. So how long to wait? This is an important two for STEMI, two trials. One of them, it's not, they are, it did not wait at all in the first one. And then anything more than 50% stenosis, they went with angiography and they fixed the artery. And there was significant advantage of fixing the non culprit uh, artery with uh, angiographic finding based on 50% stenosis only or more. Meanwhile, the other study, which is the called cardiovascular uh, no, no, liberty study, has shown the same thing, that there was a significant uh, reduction of out or improvement in outcome simply by uses of angiographic finding. But in, the other, in this one, there was, it is index uh, and stage combination. Meanwhile, the BRAMI is only uh, in, done in the index procedure. So we have two study, you know, supporting that we can do non culprit lesion, as Dr. Khaled Al Jihani pointed out from the beginning, that he will fix this LAD. You can do that based on this, as far as you have 50% stenosis of the non culprit fissiles. Now, using FFR, the similarly using FFR in the stage procedure as in the NAMI 3, then it was significantly improving the outcome, comparing the FFR use compared to the angiogram. And then the compare acute trials, this, both of them, one of them, this one in the 2017 and this in 2015, this one it was index procedure as well as during admission, and this one it was after admission. So both of them showed significant reduction of the death, MI, and ischemic driven revascularization with the uses of FFR. So what we have now, we have the complete trials. Complete trial used only 2% FFR. 2% of the patient, they are using FFR, and then most of the procedure done in the, in the acute or index procedures, and there was significant complete revascularization benefits compared to culprit only. Then, now you can appreciate that you have in this corner, Brami and Cardiovascular Liberty, that they have compared culprit only with angiographic complete revascularization, and then on this side, the FFR guided between the FFR guided complete revascularization and culprit only. Then what we are left with, 
we are left to compare the angiography complete revascularization with FFR complete re uh, revascularization. Then what you are expecting to see if you compare complete in both arms. Now, in fact, this study was the first study to make head-to-head -head comparison between uh, the angiogram complete and FFR complete, and there was no significant differences between the two strategies. Now the Korean people has come in in 2022 in the European Society of Cardiology and they have discussed the same uh, strategy and they have done this study. And they found, okay, and they found that the Korean study, they found that there is an improvement in terms of patients using the FFR but with the 50% stenosis of stenotic lesion. So what is the meta-analysis? All meta-analysis number, I will talk about the shock at the end. The meta, this is just a table for what time of these studies they have done. And then the, the you know, the meta-analysis of more than 20,000 patients have shown that there is a benefit from angiogram or the FFR and both of them, they produce the same thing. So the guide, the most of the recent one is in 2022, that the complete revascularization is confirmed. There is no difference between whether you are using angiography or using the FFR, and then the FFR still can be used in all except in acute STEMI. And the guideline now recommending the stage with the uh, procedures for the uh, 2021 for the American College of Cardiology, but 2A for the European Society of Cardiology. By this, the conclusion is that the uh, angiography might not be enough. You have to use the FFR and you have to do it in stage procedures and then you can utilize FFR in even in a stage procedure to save more time and money. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> can open the panel for any questions? We have Dr. Mohamed Atebi. Also, we can uh, proceed. We can go on. Dr. Dr. Hani and Dr. Mohammed Latibi. Yes. You thank you, Mustafa. A huge amount of data, but I know why did Flower and my failed because 70 percent of patients whom they decided on FFR had 70 percent lesion. So that's that's a major argument. Now we know that probably didn't show a difference because FFR in the acute setting is a false negative test. You see. So you can, it's not fair to decide on the FFR, I guess, or IFR in the acute setting. That's why the NGO and IFR or FFR are equal. So the clear message is that there is clear benefit in stable angina, but this diminished when there is acute presentation. So as you said, wait, but I don't think it's, uh, it's uh, probably, we don't know what is the time we should wait, maybe five days, maybe 48 hours, we don't know. But I have a question for you. Why did complete trial, for me, didn't show the expected benefit? At three years, mortality is the same. So how come can you assume that complete revascularization in STEMI, whether based on FFR or no, is, is of benefit? So the question is that the complete revascularization is beneficial. And the question was the two. Why, why you didn't see the effect of benefit in the stable patient uh, as in complete trials? Why it is better in the stable patient? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the stable patient, because the FFR, uh, the re vascular resistance in the microvascular area is normal. And then that will not increase the resistance after the stenosis. And the stenosis will be, uh, will, will, will have post stenosis a real pressure and then if you divide it to the proximal pressure you will get the FFR and the FFR is more reliable and that you have seen the gradient between the acute subacute and the chronic or stable the question really which you might be puzzled to understand to know is when this microvascular dysfunction heals then we can rely on the FFR so it is variable. They said the response from one patient to another is variable. However, based on the study, between two days to 45 days, this microvascular dysfunction might improve with the therapeutic approach. So the last question. Yeah, and, and I'll make it comment and very brief. We published the PRAMI, we published the culprit shock, we published fame and frame and all of these. And I can tell you the practice in the United Kingdom, despite that, are absolutely 
important and convincing evidence of complete revascularization. The people that have complete revascularization in the same sitting is less than 13%. And why? Because interventional cardiologists have got the frame of mind is let's be safe and let us get out of, get out of here while we're winning rather than go into more complication. But what really determines what to do and when is how your final results in the culprit lesion is, whether you ended with no reflow or not, and the complexity of your non-culprit lesion, bifurcation, calcified or otherwise, and the timing of the procedure. Three o'clock in the morning is different than three o'clock in the afternoon. And finally, what health care system are you practicing in? Are you going to benefit from deferring this procedure to have another two procedures, you know, i.e. reimbursed for two procedures, or are you practice, practicing like what I do in the United Kingdom, that everything is free at the point of delivery? Thanks. Thank you very much. I think at the end of the day, it depends on the, procedure, the operator and the lesion. For example, as Dr. Khadal Jihani said, that LAD might be attractive to fix it at the same time. However, you might expect some complications simply because of this, uh, the milieu of being a microvascular dysfunction, spasm, and embolization. And then you might have the staff has been exhausted, particularly if you have done a BCI to the RCA, which was difficult. So that's uh, keeping on consideration the contrast, the team, the time, yeah. and the Dr. presence Mustafa, of, of other visitors. Thank you very much. The I discussion think. will never end, and the people, they will.